Hi everybody, today we have Ruti Misraki. She's the relative of Odid Lifshitz, ex-journalist, but uh, one of the captives in Gaza right now. Kanem had visited the Neros Kibbutz, the house of Odid Lifshitz, which was burnt down, and he was taken into Gaza as a captive. Ruti is from Vancouver, and she is the relative of Odid. Ruti, can you tell us how are you related to Odid, and how did you hear about when the first thing happened in October 7? So Odid is my uncle, and I heard about it in the news. I just woke up and I opened the internet as usual and this is when it hit me. I saw a picture of a journalist talking in Arabic in Kibbutz near Oz. So I called my family and I heard the news. What was your first reaction and who were the other family members who told you about the story? My sister told me the story because I called her the first thing and then I called my dad to check how he's he's doing and nobody knew in the beginning what's going on. All they knew is they found out that their iPhones of both Oded and my aunt Yochke were in Gaza, but it took a little bit time, I guess, until they found out what's going on. And I was in shock. I think it took me a while to understand what happened. It's really hard to believe. Tell us what were the initial days after October 7th look like? I was in a state of a shock. I, I couldn't really believe it. And I guess it's easier to be in denial when you're so far away rather than being there. But I was, of course, very worried. Uh, we didn't know what happened to my aunt and uncle. The picture became clear, more clear, I was devastated. And then my Aunt Jorge was returned 17 days after. And ever since October 7, life stopped in a way. You know, I'm here, I'm going to work in the morning, I have my kids, I have my life, but my life actually, I feel like it stopped. I don't have any reason to celebrate anything. I lost some of my happiness, you know, and it's very hard, mostly the unknown of what's going on with my uncle now. I'm not sleeping at night, and the last few days since the horrible news about the execution of the six hostages, it's broke my spirit completely. Like, I'm a very positive person, always. I always try to see the good things in every situation. I don't know, it's, it's like really, really hard. Odid is a bit, uh, he's a senior and uh, he is in his 80s. Could you tell us more about Odid and his life? Odid, he was a journalist in Israel. Odid is a peace activist. He was always rooted for peace and for communication. Very smart, very educated very well known and he is a very Zionist he was fighting in a few of Israel wars his kids a few of them were in a very elite units but he also see the the other side and he always I know that in the 70s uh, when the Bedouin I think it was in Rafa area had some issues with the Israeli government he fought for them too. He's a justice guy. He used to volunteer, I think it was like on a weekly basis when the border was quiet and safe in an organization. So they used to go to the border and pick up some cancer patient, including kids, driving them to hospitals for treatment because they do get the treatment in Israel. Ruti, you're a Canadian and a Vancouver resident. Can you tell our viewers about the Neuros and the Kibbutz and how did you spend your life there? I was born and raised. The house is always open to people. And as a child, I used to spend all my vacation, like all summer vacation, Hanukkah, Passover, you know, in the Kibbutz, it was for me, it was like uh, heaven. I moved to Vancouver in 98, and I'm trying to get to Israel once a year to visit my family, my parents, everybody is there. And I have to say that these little small communities, the kibbutzim, at least most of them were always, on one hand, like they live very close to Gaza Strip, but they do care about the other side. Most of them were like peace activists. So yeah, it's very sad. What do you have to say about the student encampments in Canada and the hostility towards the Jewish people in Vancouver as a Canadian Jewish? How do you feel about things that are happening in Canada? I think it's insane. I think the universities should do something to stop this because it's really easy to say anti-Israel, but actually it's 
pure anti-Semitism. And I know many people now in the community that don't feel safe anymore. And I think it's horrible. This is Canada, it's 2024. We shouldn't be afraid. The other thing I must say is that I think most of the these people who protest, other than the fact that some get paid for it, they know nothing. They have no knowledge of anything that really happened. So I suggest that they go and learn uh, facts. I think it's mostly a bunch of anarchist people that just need to protest something. That's how I see it. And it's a shame. It's a shame. Okay, any last words? I call on all the world to put a lot of pressure on both Hamas and the Israeli government now to stop everything and let our people come home and safe hopefully. And one very important point that I just want to mention is that people say uh, free Palestine or ceasefire. Fire until October 6th and it was broken by the Hamas on October 7th. And people should remember that because it seems like it's easy for them not to. Okay, well, thank you for talking to us.